So it appears there's a lot of confusion on how to mod Fallout 76, so I figured I would start this brief guide on how to do it. Um, I'm going to be using Mod Organizer 2, but you can use uh, any, any modding program. The process is going to be pretty similar. In general, with Fallout 76, you're going to be missing a lot of the really good features of Mod Organizer 2, but it's still a uh, neat and organized way to do it. Um, so let's get started. So credit goes to Spicy Beach here on uh, Reddit for uh, giving a brief guide on how to do it. Um, it's a pretty simple process, but we're going to start by downloading Mod Organizer. You're also going to want to download the Fallout 76 plugin for Mod Organizer 2. I'm getting it from Nexus Mods. This is going to allow Mod Organizer to actually recognize your Fallout 76 game, and it's going to allow you to get started. So go ahead and get this downloaded. Finally, you're going to want to download the Baca file tool, Loose File Loader, which is going to allow you to package your loose files into a archive that Fallout 76 will recognize. Um, unlike Fallout 4, Fallout 3, New Vegas, or Skyrim, the engine for Fallout 76 will not recognize or use loose files, so you do actually need to package them into an archive. Um, and we'll show you how that works, but first, let's go ahead and get this downloaded. Now that you have everything downloaded, you're just going to install Mod Organizer 2. I'm going to place it in a separate folder because you want to install it and set it up as a portable instance. The global instance doesn't seem to work with Mod Organizer and Fallout 76. Once the install is complete, um, there's no point in launching it right at this moment. You're going to want to find in your download folder the Fallout 76 plugin for Mod Organizer 2. This is pretty easy to install. All you have to do is drag it into your main Mod Organizer folder for Fallout 76. Now you can change the icon on the desktop, if you so choose, just to make it easier to identify. Now we're going to go ahead and launch Mod Organizer and set up the portable instance. So under Create New Instance, we're going to create a portable instance. And you'll see now that you installed that plugin, you have Fallout 76 in the list. If you launched Mod Organizer 2 before you installed that plugin, this will not show up on the list. Now I'm going to use a different folder because I like to keep my downloads off of my SSD. Great, now the first thing that I'm going to do is change the theme. Obviously that's because light mode bothers me. Now you're going to notice if you use Mod Organizer with any of the other games, um, there's actually a plugins tab. In this case, Mod Organizer can't manage Fallout 76 plugins, so all you're going to have is your data, your saves, which is obviously going to be blank, and your downloads folder. Now you're going to want to set up your Baca tool, so navigate to your downloads folder once again, open Baca file tool, and go ahead and put it where you want to use it. Now you're going to want to make sure to add it to your Mod Organizer 2. 
That way it can properly access your mod files in order to package them. Now, much like my previous video about body slide, um, I'm going to create my own empty mod, and I'm going to call it Baka File Output. And this is where I'm going to put the archives that are created by the Baka File tool. Now, if you manage to click through too fast, just like I did, you can actually change your download folder by going to Manage Instance and Open INI. And you're going to see here, Download Directory. In my case, I mistakenly forgot that it is in a Downloads folder. Go ahead and hit Save and Close. Now go ahead and restart your Mod Organizer 2 so that the INI changes can take effect. Now you can see all of my downloads are now showing up. The ones that were manually copied are going to have this red exclamation point. Um, and all of the ones that I even downloaded from Nexus Mods uh, have that exclamation point because I manually added them. All I have to do is click Query Info and it's going to correct that. Now this one's not going to work because I actually copied this from my Fallout 4 mods. Um, there is no Nexus Mods page for Body Slide and Outfit Studio. Alright, now that I have all my mods installed and set up, I ran body slide and outputted the files. I need to package them in the Baka archive in order for them to be recognized by Fallout 76. Um, if you need more information on how to use body slide um, for Fallout 76, go ahead and click up here at this link or go down in the description. Uh, but for now, you want to make sure that you disable all of the files that you don't want actually in the archive. So in my case, I'm going to disable the files that are uh, body slide files because those aren't going to do Fallout 76 any actual good. So then we're going to go here and make sure we should just have meshes and textures. Um, now with this mod, Classy Chassis 76 actually outputs from Body Slide into its own folder. So you're going to want to take that, cut the meshes, and put them in your meshes folder and remove that because that folder is not going to be used by Fallout 76. So now that we have that perfected, it's just these two folders of loose files. So we're going to go ahead and run Baka File Tool. Now in your drop down, make sure that you select Fallout 76. If it's not showing up properly, you can go ahead and go to Paths and you can select your Fallout 76 install path. And when it's properly working, you should see the list of the files that Baka File Tool sees and is going to add to that archive. So go ahead and hit Create Archive. And once it's done, it's going to tell you where it goes. Um, I tried setting up in Mod Organizer where Baka File Tool would actually output directly to my Baka Archive output. Um, that does not appear to work properly. So what it's going to do is output to your uh, main modding folder under Baka Output and Fallout 76. So I'm just going to cut all of these files and I'm going to move them back into my mod Baka Archive Output and I'm going to overwrite these files that I already have. And now make sure that it's in enabled and you can go ahead and disable the mods with your loose files because as stated before, Fallout 76 is not even going to read them.
Now the last thing you're going to need to do is edit your INI file so that you can get Fallout 76 to recognize the added archives. So from Mod Organizer you can actually click up here and do INI Editor. Um, now if you don't already have a Fallout 76 custom.ini, it's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is navigate to your Documents and My Games Fallout 76. Um, I already have it, but it's as simple as doing a new text document. You're going to call it Fallout 76 Custom. Now you're going to add into this the line archive in brackets s resource archive to list and equal sign and you're going to place the name of your BA2 archives after this. Once you've done that all you have to do is rename it from .txt to a .ini and that's going to allow Fallout 76 to read this file. can see mine when completed. I have my Baca file output, the main and textures, as well as all the other mods that I have installed um, individually with a comma in between. And that's what a completed INI should look like. Once you've created that INI, you can now edit it in the future from the INI editor. All you have to do when you add a mod is just add a comma, space, and add the mod name dot BA2. And you're going to click save. And there you go. Now you're ready to jump in game and test it out. Now if you end up with an issue with Fallout 76 freezing at this sign-on screen, don't be too worried about it. Um, you just need to restart your computer. The Fallout 76 engine is not very well optimized and is pretty easy to have issues with. One thing to keep in mind, people have been banned for performance enhancing mods in the past. Uh, I don't think it's as often now because the PvP element of uh, the adventure mode has pretty much been removed. But um, I would be careful about any uh, quick animation mods or the one that I heard got banned was for a uh, perk loadout mod, which obviously they give you a perk loadout machine and they give you two loadouts you can select from and any more you have to buy from the atom store so I'm gonna assume that they were banned for basically bypassing the atom store and not for just regular mods in general if you're just installing mesh and texture mods uh, there's no way for one for Bethesda to even know that you're doing it and for two it's only on your computer and is not going to be viewable by anyone else so now you want to test out your mods you can see one of the really nice mods that I have is a Pip-Boy mod that makes the Pip-Boy much more useful in combat situations you don't have to scroll all the way over to get to your tabs you can see all of them from the single screen note to self look for more empty syringes and something to sterilize them with Now's the time to make sure to test all of your mods to make sure they are working properly. As you can see, my classy chassis mod is working as described. 
it's helpful to install mods separately one by one to make sure that they're working properly. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and leave me a like. Uh, subscribe if you're interested in more video game content. And leave a comment if you have any questions. Thank you very much, and happy modding.